Ian Brody is one of the few people in Canada living with FOP, an ultra-rare disease. The Canadian FOP Network is a non-for-profit organization run entirely by volunteers with the goal to fund research initiatives and raise awareness about FOP. I was first diagnosed at age 10 and with the challenges it fuses your muscles and tendons. So with my, my back and my neck are fused, uh, my arms and I've got problems with my knees. Any kind of trauma to the muscles, whether it be a bump or a fall, can cause inflammation, which can eventually turn to calcification. So I have to watch as I go around, so as I don't fall or get bumped. FOP creates many challenges in your daily life because you are limited and restricted as to what you can do. I often tell people, think of it as having a cast, say, on your arm, limits your mobility, if you can even move at all. I have to deal with that every single day. However, I don't let it get me down, and I do get out and do as much as I can. With regards to FOP, it's nothing to be scared of. Uh, it's not any sort of contagious condition or nothing. It has to deal with the muscles and small tendons that fuse to bone. I'm the only one in Sault Ste. Marie that has it. Since last year, Ian's FOP has caused him to lose even more mobility. Uh, since of last year, uh, from our walk, I uh, lost use of my right arm, my shoulder. So daily living is that much more difficult um, with eating or dressing grooming. So if you don't have the use of your arms, it's very difficult. So it really plays a factor of having good family support. And that's one thing I'm thankful for. Miranda is a local volunteer with the FOP Network who heard of Ian's story and decided to do something locally. She has since started the annual Sault Ste. Marie 5K Run Walk to cure FOP. Well, uh, this is the third year, so the first year we had about 40 to 50 people attend and it was really good for the first, first time and last year we doubled that so there was over 60 people and we raised $5,000 which was double from the first year. It's a very, um, very important cause that doesn't have a lot of outside support so that's the, the reason why it's so important to continue with the fundraising efforts that we're doing. This year, the public is encouraged to register a team in order to raise fundraising efforts. Miranda's team, the Adrenaline Junkies, have taken on an additional challenge to do as many burpees as the team gets pledged in money. Um, our goal for our team is to raise at least $1,000. So there's five of us, so that will have us doing 200 burpees each. So that will be an uh, interesting spectacle to see. <laughs> so people can pledge us online. You can also enter your own team, so we'd love to We'd love to challenge everybody to come out, make some t-shirts, bring your team, bring your family, bring, bring your dogs, and just come and show up, up and support us. Uh, it really means a lot to know of people like Miranda and uh, her team here at Catalyst because we are from a small town so it's not known if compared to maybe possibly bigger cities. So if you can make it out, we have the uh, website of Sue Run to Cure FOP and you can donate that way or you can come on down on August 9th with registration starting at 9 o'clock. To submit a team or make a donation, or simply to get more information on the walk, you can head to sueruntocurefop.com or make your way to the Roberta Bondar Pavilion on August 9th starting at 9. Reporting for Shaw TV, I'm Christian LeMay.